Here's another important video from the Personal Defense Network. Of course, one of the most obvious things about a cold weather situation is that we're going to be bundled up. We're going to be wearing either a big heavy coat, maybe layers, maybe something like a thinner shell with heavier layers underneath that will be concealing that firearm. Now we know that it's very easy if you have an open front garment to sweep it out of the way. And if we take a look at what Pete's wearing, Pete's got several layers of open front garments. Now, if he's in a situation like we are standing on this porch, we're going to be out here for 15 or 20 minutes, we're doing a little video work, maybe we're out on the range where we're moving and we're very active and that's helping keep us warm, this is fine. But if we were in a situation where we really were dealing with 15 degree temperatures and we were going to be standing outside for a while, especially if a little wind was blowing, you'd probably maybe be interested in pulling that hat down a little tighter and certainly zipping that up. So let's go ahead and zip that up and we're going to look at two different options here. One being the tighter clothing that's going to be zipped up that we can't necessarily get out of the way quickly without opening. And the other being something like what Ben's got, which is a much looser fitting around the waist area garment, which is going to be easy to pull up. Now we've dealt with this problem before when it comes to concealed garments. When we have a pullover, maybe a hoodie, maybe a quarter zip, or just a big sweatshirt or sweater that's covering a garment, it's relatively easy to pull it up. Under the bulky conditions of cold weather, however, that may not be as smooth. Now we've cleared our firearms and we've got a safe backstop in this direction. I'm going to step back out of the way and let Ben just go through that presentation and show us pulling the garment up and how that works. I'll give you an up command. Up. Okay. And back into the ready. Great. And back into the holster. So we can see that it's really important to have two hands, but what if Ben didn't have two hands? What if I was a bad guy or maybe I'm a family member that he's trying to keep protected out of the way and he uses his off hand to clear me either again as the bad guy that needs to get out of the way, the bystander that was in the way when he needs to defend himself, or maybe he's going to push me behind him. If this hand is busy, let's look at how the presentation would look. Okay, and we see that that strong hand now is responsible. Great, back to the ready. Thank you. We see that that strong hand now is now responsible for coming back in and lifting this garment up out of the way so that we can get a good grip on the gun. You can go back to the holster. Thanks, Ben. Let's go back over here to Pete now. He's bundled up. He's now protected from the cold, but it's going to be much harder for him to access his firearm. Let's look at the process for getting through this and actually opening the garment up. It's going to take more time, effort, and energy, but it's a reality of the conditions we're working in. Up. Okay. Now, while that may have been cumbersome, there just may not be another practical way to do it when we're working in a cold weather environment. Practicing this over and over and over again, making it second nature to react, come back in, open that garment up and get to your firearm, or both one-handed and two-handed, getting that garment out of the way so that you can get to the firearm is really important when it comes to protecting yourself efficiently. Understanding how to do it only comes from exposure to the exact mechanics of doing it. And the only way to make it automated is to do it frequently and realistically. Check out more videos just like this one at the Personal Defense Network.